what's up? Slunt's Joker here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Asus PG278Q, or more affectionately known as the ROG Swift. Now, I thought about how I wanted to approach this review, and I decided I wanted to kind of just go with this as more of like a cautionary tale, because if you've been following me uh, in the comments and on social media, you know that I've not had uh, the best experience with this monitor. Uh, when they announced this monitor, you know, last year, and I saw the specs of it, you know, the 144 hertz, 1440p, G-Sync, one millisecond response time, uh, you know, all that stuff, great looking aesthetic. I was very, very excited for this monitor, and it was part of the reason that I upgraded my entire system. You know, I went with the 5820K for... Uh, you know, for my editing purposes and all that stuff in my workflow. But I wound up actually pumping, going and getting the 2980s after that because I was anticipating, you know, 1440p gaming. So that was a big part of to why I upgraded. And then I wound up pushing back the monitor upgrade until I finished the whole PC. So when I sat down and finally spent the $800 on this monitor, I was really excited to get it. Uh, unfortunately, that was met with some serious disappointment uh, right off the bat because the first monitor that I got from Newegg had a dead pixel right dead center on the screen, which I mentioned uh, prior back in the in the Tech Talk video where I announced that I was going to be on Tech Talk with Jay's Two Cents, and I showed you guys uh, the example of the dead pixel, which I'll put on the screen here now so you guys can see it again. So that had a dead pixel, wound up sending that back to Newegg. Then finally I got my replacement. Almost two weeks later, they Newegg's return department is absolutely atrocious. I don't know if you guys ever experienced it, but if you've ha ever experienced the Newegg returns department and how long they take, please let me know down in the comments below because I want to know if I'm the only one, honestly, because they're, they're pretty damn horrible. I had the same exact experience just a couple months ago when I swapped out my power my power supply for a 1300 watt power supply and it took almost three weeks for the whole return to process so honestly i don't see myself ever ordering from new egg again in the future unless it's on a small item any big purchase items i'll be going over to amazon just because of their returns department but that's getting a little off topic uh back over to the task at hand which is the pg278q rog swift so let's fast forward now. I finally get my re my replacement in from Newegg, get the monitor, set it up. Uh, first, you know, first impressions after I get the new one, you know, everything looks good. It seems to be working properly, but then I started to encounter some more problems. I started to notice some backlight bleed at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Uh, I've got somewhat of a faulty display port connection on the back. I've tried multiple display port cables. I've tried different ports on my graphics card, uh, but it seems pretty obvious to me that it is the display port connection itself itself on the physical monitor because if I go back there and I grab the display port cable and I wiggle it a little bit I will lose connection the monitor's display will drop and this happens to me when I'm playing games sometimes without me touching the wire obviously I'm just sitting there playing a game like GTA online and the screen will just turn off and go black and then come back on after a couple seconds uh, sometimes also when I boot my PC I will get these sort of like cross pattern like it's just like lines going through all the text on the screen and it just looks absolutely terrible and these are problems that I have seen mentioned by other people in reviews on websites like Newegg, in forums, and in YouTube videos so I am not alone here in my bad luck with the ROG Swift and that's why I wanted to bring this video to you like this today as sort of just a cautionary tale really about this monitor and say don't buy this monitor because they have some absolutely horrendous quality control uh, at Asus right now in regards to this monitor. And I don't know what it is because in, my, in the past I've had nothing but good experiences with Asus. I have, you know, I've got the VG248QE over here. I've got another Asus monitor over there. I've got an Asus motherboard in my system. So... You know, I, I, I had a lot of confidence in Asus when I put down all the money on this monitor. And the problems, you know, that I started to experience, I wasn't aware of with other, you know, with other users having them until after I purchased it. And I started Googling uh, the issues I was having and saw this echoed with so many other people out there having the same exact issues. There's a guy who was on, is on Furious PC Gaming uh, Rigs. It's a Facebook group I'm a member of. You know, we're almost 30,000 members strong. This guy got the Swift... Uh, got it replaced. For, I can't remember what his initial issues were. Then he got his re he got his replacement, and the screen within a he was like, oh yeah, it's working, guys. The replacement's working well. Then three. 
three hours later, half of his screen was blue, half of it was orange. I'm not sure if he's a New York Knicks fan, but that's how the screen looked. It was just half orange, half blue. It just looked absolutely terrible. And then he wound up having to RMA that one. And then he finally got a replacement. And now he said the new one is working okay. Uh, you know, another person in the, down in the subscriber feed, Ryden Wolf. What's up, Ryden? Uh, he had a bad monitor, uh, Swift, that he had to send back and get a replacement for. And he had a video up on his channel for that. So... I am not alone in this aspect. It's not. It wasn't just my bad luck that I've gotten two bad monitors now. This problem seems, seems to be pretty much consistent across the board. And if you go and look in the Newegg reviews, you will definitely see that down uh, down there. But unfortunately, they have they have four eggs right now still on Newegg. But if you go through and look at the reviews, you will see an alarming inconsistency, alarming uh, consistency between. Uh, how long someone's owned the monitor and how good of a review they've given it because so many people have like if they have like one star for t for ownership on the monitor but they've given it five eggs and i would contribute that to the fact that they haven't gotten over the honeymoon period with their new toy and they just get the monitor they turn it on they're like oh this is great and let's give go give it five eggs um whereas i'm someone that likes to spend a little bit more time with a piece of hardware before i commit a review uh i wound up giving them two eggs on there because it does hit every checkbox on my list for what i was looking for in a gaming monitor monitor upgrade, but the quality control at Asus is just terrible. Uh, Asus actually responded to my review saying that, you know, they apologized because it was the first, uh, the first product in this series, and I guess, I guess maybe they're planning on doing uh, a continuation of the ROG Swift in the future, and I would be excited to see if they fix the quality control issues for sure, because right now, uh, I just can't imagine it getting much worse. And that pretty much brings me uh, to today. You know, I, I'm still within my 30 days on Newegg. I, I could still technically return this uh, and get the new Acer monitor, the XB270HU, I think is the number, the Acer Predator. It's got pretty much the same exact spec as this monitor, except it's IPS, so it's going to have better color reproduction. And it's about the same exact price. Uh, the only thing that has kept me from pulling the trigger on that is, uh, first, I don't want to, you know kind of have the downtime without having this monitor on hand because this monitor has made my life so much easier in regards to video editing and gaming is just fantastic at 1440p as well but having that extra 1440p screen real estate for my workflow has just been absolutely amazing so that's you know that's the reason why I've decided to hold on to this monitor and not return it to Newegg because this one is working okay enough uh, where I'm willing to put it up, put up with it. But that's not something that people should have to do. If someone drops $800 on a monitor like this, it, it should be perfect. It, you shouldn't have to just sort of settle with it and say, oh, I'm not going to return it because I don't want to go three weeks without a monitor because of Newegg's shitty return policy. Uh, no, you should not have to put up with that. And that's why I'm um, sort of telling people, you know, don't buy this monitor, either wait for something better to come out or go get the Acer. But even the Acer has had some issues uh, early on. It hasn't been out long enough to see, you know, how deep of an impact it's going to have, you know, on sales and if, you know, the problem, if the problems are going to continue. But they have had some similar issues that Asus met with this monitor. So, I would if if I was on the on the on the the um if I was shopping right now for a 1440p you know monitor the best advice I could give someone is just wait um, because it sounds like from Asus that they're already working on another series of this monitor and my kind of thought process here is I'm just going to hold on to my monitor and if it breaks in a couple months I'm going to RMA it with Asus and get a replacement and I'll just keep doing that until they come out with a new series and they'll, then they'll probably just upgrade me to the newest one. That's basically my thinking right now but that's not the type of thing that a consumer should have to put up with or even have to think about their monitors like oh yeah it's a pretty shit monitor so I'm just going to keep it uh, until they come out with something better and then hopefully they'll replace it for me that's you know that's not something you should have to deal with when you spend eight hundred dollars so be careful uh you know think twice about you know hitting that buy button on this particular monitor or the acer get out there read the reviews and you'll see that i'm not the only person making this these comp these complaints uh and i just i really hope asus fixes it because otherwise spec you know spec sheet wise and looks wise of the monitor, it's fantastic. And I just, I hope they get this ironed out in the future so that I can get, you know, a replacement that's actually working. I also wanted to briefly comment on the quality of the TN screen. A lot of people were saying this is one of the better TN screens out there, and I would completely uh, disagree. Some of the viewing angles on this thing are pretty bad. Even just sitting straight on at the monitor, if I shift my gaze kind of to the top, bottom left or right of the screen I will begin to see the bad viewing angles creeping in from those side angles which is most 
uh, apparent to me when I'm sitting at my desktop. When I'm in games, I can't really notice it at all. But sitting at the desktop, which is, you know, I'm spending most of my time at the desktop. I don't, I, I, I only game maybe a couple hours a day at most. So most of my time is spent at my desktop working on projects. So I can notice the, you know, the bad viewing angles just coming in from the side. And if I actually stand up and go across the room and look at it from the side, the whole screen practically turns like this color of like yellow. So the TN quality is not amazing on this because I, like I said, I've got the VG248 QE right over here, which is a TN panel that I've been living with for almost two years, and it doesn't have anywhere near as bad of viewing angles as the ROG Swift, not even close. I mean, I could I could stand across the room, uh, you know, at a at almost a complete side angle on the VG248 QE, and it will just be absolutely fine. It gets a little bit kind of dark, but this monitor turns like straight up fucking yellow. It's pretty ugly. If I'm sitting in bed and I look over at the monitor, it's just like a yellow sheet. You can barely even see what's on the screen. So the viewing angles are not fantastic. Uh, it took me a good while to get my color, my colors set the way that I wanted to. You know, I had to go in and you know tweak all the colors in the menus uh, because right out of the box, it did not look very good at all. So that's just an aspect of TN that a lot of people would say, oh, yeah, you got to put up with the colors are going to be bad. Um, well, I didn't have to put up with that on the, the older monitor, the 1080p monitor. So I don't know what's happened here with the ROG Swift, but it's nowhere near as good as my $200 VG248 QE or $250 roughly uh, monitor. It's nowhere near as good as that. The whites aren't as good. The blacks aren't as deep. The you know When you're on like really, really dark images, uh, it just looks kind of gray and washed out. White don't look truly white they look kind of gray kind of faded and not really too impressive at all um, other colors are okay reds and blues those all look good uh, and in, in games it's not so much of an issue it's really more just so at the desktop is where I start to see a lot of these color issues creeping in especially like watching movies like if I'm watching a movie and I like lean back in my chair I will see you know the image quality just turn to absolute shit uh, because of the terrible viewing angles on the screen so just you know, iterating again, you know, what I've said because of my experience with the, uh, you know, defective monitors is this monitor just has failed to execute um, what they set out to do. It's got everything you could want on paper, but Asus has failed to execute it, um, you know, in a way that I could possibly give it my my thumbs up and say, go out, get this monitor, no questions asked. It's worth $800 or, you know, I think it's $750 right now on Newegg, but still I could not recommend anyone buying this monitor i'm not going to be putting an affiliate link down below so that anyone can buy this monitor even though i would make money off of it uh because i don't think anyone should buy this monitor um i think the acer is probably a better bet at this time if you really can't wait but if you can wait i would because i the, the way that monitor development is going right now there's so many new monitors coming out so fast that we're probably going to see a contender to the acer and the asus by the end of the year so if you can wait by all means, please wait, because right now, this is not your best bet at $800. I cannot justify this expense to anyone if you're looking for a stellar gaming, a stellar experience overall. If you're just concerned about games and only games, if you're only going to use this to game, then it might be okay. But you're still going to have to deal with the possibility that you might get a defective monitor or something that might break in just a couple of weeks down the road, like so many other people have had. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it, even though it's kind of bad news. Uh, for the Swift, so please stick a like on the video below if you did, and don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter if you want to keep up to date with what I'm doing or help contribute ideas to future videos, and you can get kind of information like this a lot earlier on because I'm always on there uh, chatting with people and giving them my thoughts on the products and games that I'm checking out before I actually do videos. So go ahead and do all that stuff, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Ta-ra!